Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Aditi. We got range starting the upper left hand corner as the red Protoss upper hand corner. We got cold starting as the blue Terran. And I like that we have blue uh, for cold. Just feels appropriate, which is why I did the color swap in this instance. This is going to be on retro once again because it is the opening round and the maps are fixed, which I actually feel like was a really smooth decision there. And it made the tournament run a lot smoother from Zen. Zen organizing this, by the way. Uh, Zen Brood War, be sure to check him out. Zen underscore BW, I believe. Uh, or it might be just Zen BW on Twitch. I just followed him when I could and haven't memorized the screen. <laughs> I know it's Zen BW in some iteration. Watch, it's like Zen underscore underscore BW. In which case, shame on me. Um, but anyway, Zen, a fantastic tournament organizer, uh, really has done a good job making absolutely everything run smoothly. And is just obviously passionate about this and the community and everything. Uh, which is, I think, why... I think people are really drawn to this tournament in particular. But anyway, <clears throat> ranged, I gotta say, uh, I have been impressed with ranged play for quite some time now. I'm looking for him to make it into the Pro League of BSL sometime in the near future. I feel like his game sense is insanely good. Insanely good. Um, and I, I really, it's one of those things where I'm like, I feel like his game sense might be even the best out of all the guys there. And I know that's a big statement considering the level of play from all the guys there, but I, I really do feel like that. He he made some decisions I've seen in the past that I haven't even seen like ASL guys do as far as uh, game sense and patience. That's a really strong combination. Game sense and patience will get you far everywhere in life, right? It's one of the, I, I feel like I have decent game sense in many instances personally, but not a lot of patience is the second. I do have endurance though, and maybe that makes up for it. Regardless, Regardless, uh, range gonna go ahead and open up with a cybernetics core, kind of odd gateway cybernetics core pla uh, placement right here, but it's gonna skip that initial zealot, go for cybernetics core first, Let's see if he opens up initial dragoon. I'm wondering if this has been kind of a shift recently because, uh, and I wonder if it is because of kind of the shift in the meta overall, where Terran had been less apt to go for barracks into command center, uh, or go for initial uh, pressure pushes. And so Protoss have been a little bit less, a little bit more hesitant to build the initial defensive uh, Zealot and have opted instead to go for more Dragoon play right off the bat. Um, I do, I kind of like the just going straight to Dragoon, uh, straight Dragoon, it, I feel like it opens up a lot of options, particularly in information denial uh, early against the SCV Scout. By the way, SCV Scout went bottom right hand corner first, but a nice adjustment here from Cold, recognizing that, okay, that probe made it into my base and with the timing of that Scout, it's most likely it came from the top left, so adjusting to the top left. Could be also he's, tr he's doing kind of the emergency mode uh, check situation, which is always scout your worst possibility first. So bottom right, then top left, then cross position. Depending, because uh, cross map nexus, always a bad thing. Ranged, looks like he is going to be able to get, well, is he going to get the probe out? Got to go a little bit north. And fortunately, the second marine not in position, but does escort that initial out. No second, no third marine, I should say. SCV able to confirm that it wasn't Nexus first, but is he going to lose his life for it? This probe might have something to say about that. Let's see the... Never mind, SCV dies regardless. And probe going to actually... So it looks like it was coming back to maybe take some, some hits there. And the probe wandering out towards the 6 o'clock. This is... I'm curious what this probe's about. Are they? This probe can change the balance of a Dragoon versus Marine engagement. Potentially. And right now, okay, we do have that bunker being built. This is a lost fight for that Dragoon. Dragoon gonna have to sneak out, and that Vulture gonna be able to make its way out on the field. Gonna take a few hits. Maybe the probe's just there. <coughs> oh, look at that. Clever maneuver by ranged. You see what I mean by game sense? This is what I mean by game sense. Stuff like that. Just had a really good sense that that Vulture was gonna get snuck out to the south. Which I guess is, I mean, a standard thing to do, but that was a really clever play right there putting that probe in the way to get extra damage on that vulture to negate it's stuff like that where I'm just very impressed by Range's play and could see him going far in the future little things here and there along uh, along those ends it looks like he's going to get that Dragoon towards a cutoff range and the probe is like a predator now trying to find the location of this vulture and again more game sense you can see Range getting in the perfect position to engage the Vulture before uh, it's able to really get on the map and first of all get any sort of mind compliment down, but that losing that Vulture, you lose all sorts of scouting information as a Terran player. It really makes you have to prioritize 
uh, prioritize a lot of things differently. Because you don't know whether there's a third base up. You didn't. He didn't even get a good look at the Dragoon count in the space of that. And right now he's got nothing on his front. So he doesn't know the Dragoon count size. He doesn't know whether he's going up against DT. He doesn't know that there's a quick third up. In the meantime, we know that it's two gate and robotics. But this is a very, very uncomfortable position for Cole to be in. And dropping the engineering bay just in case out of necessity to either cope with Reavers or... Uh, and you can see just dropping turrets everywhere. Reavers, Dark Templar, it could be anything because that Vulture got him absolutely no information uh, to be able to rule out any sort of possibilities. In the meantime, Range just crawling around, checking out <coughs> bottom left with that worker just to be absolutely sure in space of things. Looks like it's Siege Tech and a Siege Tank queuing up and plus one weapon. So I think Cold just going to... Uh, We'll see how he plays it. Right now, I think this is just going to be Upgrade Terran, but again, the meta Upgrade Terran's really had a hard time recently. I can see Range being one of those guys that can pick Upgrade Terran apart, so I'm wondering if we're going to see something like a 5 or 6 or even 7 factory here in the mid-game more as a preventative measure. I, I feel like I, I should have mentioned earlier what Terran had been doing recently, which is Terran recently have been going for larger factory floods in the mid-game, like 4 factories at a minimum, and building larger... Uh, attack groupings to go out and either procure their third or threaten attack. And I feel like they're kind of reading it based on the size of the Protoss army. So if they move out and they're like, okay, this army is way too small, I think they go for the counterattack and try to take down a third or something along those lines. But if it's a sizable army, then they kind of go into more, we're going to slow crawl this out and go ahead and establish our third with a, a large uh, concentrated attack force. But that's given a lot of room, a lot of leeway for Protoss to do all sorts of things. These are weird figures right here. Like snakes with, I don't, they don't look like they're like snakes, but they have bugs on their head. Anyway, Observer going to <coughs> shift its way around, try to look at the probe saturation, sees a single SCV on gas at the natural expansion, is gonna be able to crawl in underneath that missile turret. <coughs> and critically, range gonna be able to get a very good look at this factory count. The Observer's getting into the base are all the more important these days. And look at this bottom left-hand corner. Double Stargate already down. And where's the Fleet Beacon? Is the Fleet Beacon going to drop right there? Is this going to be two base carrier? This might be two base carrier in response to this. And this is what I was talking about where your Protoss can get away with absolute murder in kind of the confusion space here. Yeah, it's going to be two base, two base carrier here. And we'll see how Cold responds or if he's able to respond. First of all, I don't know that, and this is the other problem of being so defensive. You just have no idea. Like you don't know what troop count you're up against. You don't, you just don't have much of an instinct whatsoever. The Reaver and two Zelts making the way out to maybe counter a plus one weapons uh, push. The <coughs> plus one weapons push might have been able to ransack this, honestly. Um, although this is a good amount of Dragoons. We do have that Zelt and that Reaver making its way out. This the, the problem here is, is usually you'll have more gateways at this stage to try to counter that plus one weapons push. If the plus one weapons push was coming, these re, these uh, carriers likely would have been uh, a little bit late uh, overall. But And it would have put Cold in a recoverable uh, situation where he probably could have gone Goliath or something along those lines. Anyway, Reaver's out in the front. The Vulture's sneaking out as a threat, not as anything legitimate, just to see what's going on out here. Gonna plant a mine on the low ground underneath us, a single zealot. What? Okay, range is just showing off now. Did you guys see that? Was able to do the zealot drop and get a mine sneak right there. <coughs> Perfectly executed dud on that zealot. Beautiful. Woof. Yeah, hacks, I tell ya. Cheater Protoss here. You've heard of Cheater Terran. I love UV. Now we got Cheater ranged here. Uh, people were watching him. And this was in land tournament situations, so the hacks were, like, amazing. Like, right on point. To be able to pull them off. Holy cow. But not amazing play from ranged right here. Very, very sharp. Interceptors plus some weapons upgrading. Uh, it is possible there would be a commsat here, but it looks like the academy was, in fact, skipped. Cole trying to cut corners in that regard, and as a result... Not going to be able to confirm whether that plus one weapons... That's something that Artosis might have been able to see. In space of the thing, he's the one who mentioned it. In space of it, and who would have Comsat here just to try to... Because usually, I, I gotta, uh, I guess, slap Cole's hand a little bit here. Is Cold 
is playing like he has more information than he has because he skipped that academy and skipped that comp set in the space of this. In the meantime, Range going to go ahead and grab a third base. Initial two carriers out. <coughs> and the clock is ticking on him. He's still at two factories. He is getting range. He's going for a third command center, so he's still trying to play upgrade Terran Light. As though he's going to be able to get a, a cheap and easy third base. Oh, never mind. I missed this. Three factories were hidden up to the north away from the observer here. So it did, in fact, go to, to five factories. So let's see if he goes for the press now that the plus one weapons is done. I think ranged. I don't know if he's has spotted a lot of this, though, because there's a lot of siege tanks underneath. Which gets scary. The Goliath's getting pecked away at, though. Reaver is getting pecked away at here. The Reavers have taken pretty good damage. One Reaver has been taken out. The shuttle is taken out. That's going to make Cold feel a lot better about this. He's got all sorts of siege tanks stacked at that ramp line. And I don't know if Range has been paying attention. He sees the two siege tanks here, but I don't know if he's been paying attention overall. <clears throat> so now Cold in a very good position to move, but in a bad position in the long term because all these carriers have to do is move to the north. And basically if Cold like just did a an attack move across the map, he might be in a better situation, but I don't know that he's going to attack move with the Reaver on the ground instead, and he's already built that third command center, so his response is to go for five factory <clears throat> and float it, it looks like, and he's floating it from a far position as well. Another thing I don't like Terran's doing these days is if you're going to go for the five factories, or six or seven factories, and you're going to have that big ground army, you might as well establish position and just build it on site in the space of it, rather than making it even slower by building and floating. Or float it and use it to spot as you're, you're placing, uh, or use something else to spot, like the engineering bag. Do it flash style. Anyway, four carriers out, the attack hasn't come. I think Cold going off the five factories and feeling like he felt enough resistance, where he's not going to go for a SWAT, and instead playing right into range's hands range with 30 supply lead and a good portion of that is these carriers a vulture is going to sneak here to the bottom left hand corner it's going to find a probe and might find the rest of this but it's going to be too little too late does he even find it he does not find it i don't i don't he was on uh move command so i don't even know that he spotted it either so supply depot being built rather than turrets here and so that's going to be a dead command. Like, he might be able to get the command center out if he moves it now. But he's going to have to sacrifice a lot of siege tanks. Yeah, Cole just going to GG right there. So range pulling it off. <coughs> yeah, kind of a... We'll call GG right there. We're going to move into game two. Ranged really playing well here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.